The Super Mario Bros. sequel movie should introduce Daisy, Rosalina, Wario, and Waluigi. That's a great idea. Because of the success of the Super Mario Bros. movie, it was a given that the film would be getting a sequel. So what could it be about? In order to give myself a clearer idea, I needed to refresh my memory of the first movie, a film which I've only seen once and it was the day it was released in cinemas. Needless to say, I've forgotten quite a bit of what happened. Does Batman show up? I'm pretty sure he doesn't, but there's only one way to be certain, and that is to rewatch it. I finally found it. Wow, found the problem. <laughs> Princess. Prison. Kind of my thing. 92 minutes later, or slightly less because I skipped the credits, it's too much reading, and the viewing has helped spark some ideas for what could happen in the sequel. Luckily for me, I don't just have the first Super Mario Bros. movie to draw inspiration from, but also decades worth of Mario video games. I didn't play all of them because that would have taken longer than 24 hours, therefore ultimately counterproductive, but I played a lot of them before, and also have access to the internet. Not to brag. To be fair, you would also need to have access to the World Wide Web, otherwise you couldn't watch this video. Back to the games. The first movie had numerous references to games including Mario Kart, Luigi's Mansion, and the side-scrolling original, so I wanted to steer clear of those and use some others. One of my favourite games growing up was Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, but Sonic kind of has its own universe thing going on, so I drew a metaphorical line through that game. But ugly Sonic on the other hand? No, I'm just kidding. However, another favourite game of mine is Mario Party 8, which as someone who's played all the Mario Party games is the most superior and there is no debate here. If you even question that, you're just wrong, especially if you say Mario Party 9 or 10, because quite frankly, they're not Mario Party games. I don't consider them as such. Like how a Star Wars fan doesn't consider certain Jedi movies as canon. I mean, what were Nintendo thinking having all the players work together but not really? Anyway, because of my love of Mario Party, I knew I wanted to have that game involved in the movie somehow. I like it! When it came to choosing the characters who would appear in the sequel, the first player on the board was Yoshi due to his egg being tasted at the end of the Super Mario Bros. movie. Shockingly, I also wanted Mario, I know, controversial, plus the return of Luigi, Peach, Toad, Donkey Kong, and Bowser. However, I also thought it would be a good idea to introduce more than just one new character, so I went back to look at the different characters who have appeared in the Super Mario lore, and the obvious additions were Wario, Waluigi, and Daisy. The person, not the flower. This led me to my first plan for what the movie could be about. Tell me, tell me. The idea was to open the movie with Mario, Luigi, Peach and Toad playing a board game version of Mario Party as Bowser watches on from his cell. As this is happening, Wario and Waluigi enact an epic breakout for Bowser. He ends up taking over Daisy's castle where she alerts the Mushroom Kingdom. Together they go to battle him, but when they arrive, Bowser has built a life-size version of Mario Party which they have to play in order to defeat him. Now, there are a few flaws in this idea. One, I completely forgot about Yoshi. Two, the idea to have a large portion of the movie centered around Mario Party felt forced. It felt like it could have gone boring relatively quickly. And three, it didn't really develop any of the characters. So it was back to the drawing board. Again, metaphorical drawing board. I'm doing this all on my computer. Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. I spent the next few hours playing with different ideas like chasing Bowser into Brooklyn where Mario attaches to Yoshi, have Bowser tamper with the pipes where they end up in a faraway land and they have to journey back to stop Bowser from doing something, and even the idea where Bowser wasn't the main villain. But none of these ideas felt interesting. That was until I remembered the flashback of Peach in the first movie which sparked a game-changing idea. Where did Peach come from? Who are her parents? What's her favourite spread on toast? I looked into the different Super Mario characters and decided Rosalina could be her mother. This opened up the whole story. By bringing in Rosalina, we can have a reason for the Luma in the first movie being locked up, we can have strong character development with Peach, and we can expand on the universe by the introduction of new characters and worlds. I am onto something here. So now that I had the idea, I knew that the theme of the movie would be family. And by determining this, it brought about a way to introduce another family into the story too. But that's a bit of a spoiler, so you'll have to wait around to find out who this other family is. And no, it's not the Fast and Furious. I got family. At this point, the ideas were flowing to me. I had the foundation laid out, so it was time to write the story. So without further ado, this is my pitch for the Super Mario Brothers movie 2. That unintentionally rhymed. That's a go. The movie opens years ago. Bowser learns of a place called the Comet Observatory, home of Rosalina and the Loomers. The Loomers are stars with magical abilities and Bowser wants them. Unfortunately for him, the power is linked to Rosalina. 
The only way for Bowser to harness the Luma's magic is if Rosalina willingly says so. Bowser travels to space for the mission, nearly destroying the world before one of the Lumas summons a pipe for Rosalina to escape, leading her to a location we don't learn about yet. Meanwhile, Bowser captured a Luma and brought it back to his castle. This is the same Luma from the first Super Mario Bros. movie. This also explains Bowser's obsession with stars. I'm a star! Cut to the present day, where Mario, Luigi, Peach and Toad are playing a life-size version of a game created by Mario, which he calls Mario Party. Bowser watches on from his cell, jealous and wanting to play. At the end of the game, Mario and Peach look out over the Mushroom Kingdom as she talks about wanting to find where she came from. As this is happening, Wario and Waluigi enact an epic prison break, releasing Bowser from the Mushroom Kingdom. Kingdom. They escape on Yoshis, creatures which were believed to have gone extinct. The three evil goers escape through a pipe to Brooklyn, where Mario, Luigi and Peach follow. On the other side is the Yoshi egg that was teased at the end of the first movie. It's hatching as they arrive. We learn that Yoshi is attached to the first being it sees once it's hatched out of its shell, and as Mario is that person, that's who Yoshi attaches to. However, having a dinosaur follow them around in New York would look a little suspicious, so they try to leave it behind, only for it to keep following regardless. While they're walking the streets of Brooklyn, Yoshi is eating all the apples on the trees. Suddenly they pass a florist giving Peach a flashback. She's seen this shop before, so they go inside. Working at the shop is Daisy. Not like a flower, there's not a flower behind the register, it's Daisy from the Mario games. She looks remarkably similar to Peach, leading to Daisy recognising her immediately and learning that they're siblings. Now I know they're not siblings in the game, but there are other canonical differences in the first movie, so this can be another one. Daisy also reveals that their mother is Rosalina, who was brought into this world because of Bowser. That must be why he's in Brooklyn, to find Rosalina. The group rush to Rosalina's house, but they're too late. Bowser's already kidnapped her. Bowser was able to locate her because the Luma acts as a tracker or magnet to where Rosalina is. The protagonists hastily return to the pipes, but their path has been tampered with and end up in the dungeon of Bowser's castle. Laughing, Bowser demands that Rosalina order the Lumas to grant his wishes or her children will suffer a painful end. But as Bowser is saying this, Yoshi pops out a power-up because of all the apples he ate in New York. They use this to break through the dungeon, rescue Rosalina, and with help from the Lumas, teleport away in a pipe. Hooray! In the room that Rosalina was being held in were all the possessions Bowser had hoarded over the years, including hundreds of Yoshi eggs, so they too fall through the pipe into the Mushroom Kingdom. Tell me more, tell me more. We learn that Peach had fallen into a river when she was young and sucked into the pipe which led her to this world. Rosalina spent her whole life searching for Peach, but due to her concussion on entry into New York, was unable to remember the location. She tracked the city pipelines, but was always unsuccessful. Not to worry though, they're all alive and now reunited. But then Rosalina reveals something shocking about Bowser. That wasn't Bowser who captured them. That was Bowser Jr. What? Cut to Bowser Jr. who's approaching his father, who's three times his size. Bowser Sr. is disappointed in his son for allowing Rosalina to escape. Jr. has spent his whole life trying to impress his father to find powerful stars and complete the mission that his dad was unsuccessful in achieving all those years ago at the Comet Observatory. He's collected many Lumas, only they're completely useless without Rosalina handing over the power. Luckily for the Bowsers, they don't need to go after Rosalina because they know that she'll be coming to them to rescue the captured Lumas. What happens next? As the Mushroom Kingdom are preparing for Bowser's castle with help from Donkey Kong, all the Yoshi eggs begin to hatch, attaching to a toad or other main protagonist. They march to Bowser's castle where the toads on the Yoshis battle the Koopas while the main characters face Bowser's family. The Bowsers get the upper hand, with Junior putting Rosalina in a position that forces her to transfer the powers of the Luma to Bowser Senior for which he takes all the credit. Bowser has the power of all the Lumas and is using it to destroy Rosalina and her family. It's one against dozens of people. Bowser Jr. watches on, realising that there are all these people who love each other trying to protect everyone, while Bowser Sr. has only ever cared about himself, not even his own son. All Bowser Sr. ever wanted was power. Bowser Jr. intervenes, stopping his father from using the magic. Then he and the other protagonists defeat Bowser Sr., falling into the castle's volcano. Bowser Jr. apologises for his behaviour over the years and is forgiven. How does it end? The movie ends with Bowser and the others playing a game of Mario Party. In the post credit scene, Bowser Sr. emerges from the lava as Dry Bowser. Anyway, let me know what time you want me to come in, Illumination and Nintendo, so we can discuss this further. What do you want the second Super Mario Brothers movie to be about?